Europe thinks that it is fighting Russia, at least economically. But most of the times, European countries just keep fighting among themselves. The war in Ukraine has erected a Berlin Wall of sorts all over again. During the Cold War, this concrete wall separated Eastern Europe and Western Europe and also split the German capital of Berlin into two. Parts of Europe which lay to the west of this wall were controlled by US allies in Europe and parts which lay to the east of the wall were controlled by the Soviet Union. Today, Europe is divided into the east and the west again. While one side is slowly softening its approach, the other wants to continue a hardline one towards Russia. Hello and welcome, this is Shubhangi Sharma and you're watching First Post. Eastern and Western Europe aren't seeing eye to eye on a host of issues. Both sides have different approaches to not just dealing with Russia, but also supporting Ukraine. Western Europe is increasingly dropping hints that it wants the war to end and everything to go back to normal. Eastern Europe has quite the opposite approach to dealing with Russia and the war in Ukraine. On Thursday, another glaring fault line within Europe came to light. Western European countries are calling to loosen restrictions on Russian fertilizer exports. This bloc has six nations. On the other hand, a bloc of four Eastern European nations wants the existing blockade of Russian fertilizers to continue. The bloc of six Western European nations says that the existing sanctions make it too difficult to supply fertilizers to third countries, which in turn increases the danger of famine in Africa. But Eastern European nations, led by Poland, argue that any dilution of sanctions would end up boosting Russian revenues, but a deal has been reached at the European Union. So what does this deal do? It helps Russia sell fertilizer without restrictions. Curbs on Russian fertilizer exports have been eased, but the language of exemptions is now specific and limited. That pushed Eastern Europe to agree to the deal, while more clarity on the issue made way for Western Europe to sign. Basically, curbs on Russian fertilizer have been eased by Europe. Now, Ukraine is furious. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba reacted to the European Union deal, saying, Attempts to allow Russian oligarchs and companies to derogate from the already imposed EU sanctions deal a blow to the entire sanctions regime, undermine support for Ukraine and our joint effort to stop Putin's war machine. Now, Western Europe is not acting out of the supposed magnanimity of its heart. Africa definitely faces a precarious situation. More than 145 million Africans are currently going hungry. African nations believe that the EU sanctions on Russia are to blame for rising food insecurity across the continent. Around 26 million in Ethiopia, Kenya and Somalia face acute food insecurity. Europe's sanctions have been clogging up supplies of Russian fertilizer at European ports. Ports in the Netherlands, Belgium, Latvia, Estonia and Lithuania have become congested with Russian fertilizer cargoes. That has caused fertilizer shortages across Africa and has also led to price rise. Around 40% of Ghana's fertilizer supplies before the war, for example, came from Russia. Europe is fast losing whatever little goodwill it had in Africa. Take this for instance. In a recent UN vote on a resolution condemning Russia's attempt to annex Ukrainian territories, around two-fifths of African countries abstained or voted in Russia's favor. EU's latest relaxation of sanctions will do two things. First, it will restart flows of Russian fertilizer and mitigate some of Africa's troubles. Second, the easing of fertilizer curbs will lower prices for Western European farmers. Contrary to what Eastern Europe believes, curbs on Russian fertilizers have so far not yielded any concrete results. According to Russian officials, the profits of fertilizer manufacturers have not been impacted despite export volumes being 10% less compared to last year. This episode has shown how there exists a mighty cleave between Western and Eastern Europe's approach towards Russia and the war in Ukraine. So do you think Western Europe wants the EU to soften its stand on Russia? 
Do let us know in the comments.